welcome. You're watching Indian Open right here on Bloomberg Quint Live. Let's take a quick look at what's been happening in Asia and how we set up for this morning straight after that uh, carnage that we saw in the market yesterday, particularly for oil and gas and banks. So the setup looks weak yet again. Uh, Asia's up pocket is in the red, though not as heavy uh, in Hong Kong and in Japan, just a quarter of a percent to a tenth of a percent. But SGX Nifty is trading absolutely flat. A slight positive bias is what you've got. So we'll have to wait and watch us to see how we open up for trade right here. But the futures and options space, what happened in yesterday's session and how we're set up uh, for this morning's trade, Agam Vakil joins in for that. Agam. Uh, good morning, Devina. As you've already put it, uh, we had, uh, well, uh, a turbulent day yesterday, considering a 1.5% cut uh, near that one. Now, rollover is currently standing at around 26%, uh, with two days left for expiry. This is uh, considerably lower than the 30% average that we've seen over the previous three months as far as the nifty rollers are concerned. So traders are clearly hesitant to take uh, and carry forward their positions, given the kind of weakness that we've seen yesterday. If we talk about the nifty bank rollovers, again, relatively low at around 22%. So we're going to have to wait and watch as to where uh, things stand. But moving on, um, well, as far as your India volatility index is concerned, that's risen another 6%, now at 24 Perhaps some might say this is on expected lines because of, well, your general elections. And we're likely to see the wicks remain Consider at considerably high levels. But moving in, uh, what we're actually seeing is some very interesting changes. And uh, we've seen a little bit of an increase in the 11,700 call. And that has led to maximum open interest now shifting towards 11,700, which is expected to provide uh, sig significant resistance on the upper end, considering the Nifty is somewhere around 11,600. Uh, well, at least in the near term, we may not see it move above the 11,700 mark. The Nifty put call ratio on expected lines came off to around 1.34. And in terms of stocks, we are keeping an eye on IDBI Bank, Vodafone Idea, along with something like a PC Jewel and Reliance Capital, which are in the FNO band. Uh, three stocks which move back into the band is Adani Power, DLF, and Jet Airways. Jet Airways, though, it was uh, obvious considering the kind of shorting that we saw yesterday, even though it recovered from days' lows. India Bose Housing Finance is another interesting one. A lot of shorts building in. Well, rollover standing at around 19%, so significantly low. Besides that, Yes Bank, this one was one of the top losers on the Nifty, down 7%, so a lot of shorts building in here as well. And BPCL, of course, from the Indian oil marketing space, considering the rise in crude, and we're likely to see more pressure, some more pressure today as well, considering shorts building in there. And Reliance Industries, of course, was again one of the top losers on the Nifty yesterday, down 3%, also a drag on the indices. We continue to keep an eye on this one. Unfortunately, all the names that I have on my list today are losers. We're going to have to wait and watch whether or not there could be some recovery in store for some of these names today. All right, Agam. Uh, NSC has also announced exclusion of 34 securities from the derivative space, all this on the basis of the new selection criteria. Uh, yes, and uh, this is a very interesting list. Perhaps a list, uh, you know, a lot of uh, traders and analysts were talking about with anticipation because, uh, well, because of the new eligibility criteria, there has been a lot of change. And uh, there will be some surprising names, but many names which are not surprising at all. So if you consider the likes of Godfrey Phillips, so perhaps, uh, you know, something like a GSFC, IDFC, uh, Suzlon Energy for, for me personally stood out because, uh, you know, a lot of analysts were calling for the exclusion of Suzlon for the longest time and it is now finally out. Jet Airways is another one which doesn't really come as a surprise after the kind of, uh, you know, uh, well, moves that is seen with, with respect to volatility. There were likes such as PC Jeweler which remained, uh, given the kind of volatility that those stocks have seen, a handful of names from uh, the AD AG Group as well have made the list, which includes Reliance Power. Let's not forget something like a TV18, Broadcast18, or Wokhart, or for that matter, Tata Communications also moving out. So some uh, uh, long list of names, but uh, was, um, as some analysts may say, it's something that is warranted. Right, Agam, thanks very much for that. So we'll keep no. an eye out for all of those 34 names. 
But on to the big story of the day then, Blackstone Group will buy a controlling stake of 51% in SL Pro Pact from Ashok Goel Trust. The deal will also trigger an open offer. Let's speak to uh, SL Pro Pact's Vice Chairman and MD, Mr. Ashok Goel, is joining us on the phone line right now. Mr. Goel, thanks very much for taking our time and speaking to Bloomberg Quint. Uh, first off, just to get in a sense of, uh, you know, how strategic is this deal according to you? And what does this do in terms of your role post the deal completion? Well, thank you so much. Uh, the strategic aspect of it is that uh, that uh, the company um, goes into a strong hand uh, uh, um, in the hands of people who have the same ethos, same culture, and, and same governance standards. Um, and for an entrepreneur, it is um, uh, nothing more rewarding if the legacy of of what has been created continues and and flourishes. Uh, that's that's why it is important, and and the fact that they bring on table uh, not only the 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 market relationship uh, with uh, various uh, uh, stakeholders, and um, and and of course bring in the financial muscle uh, along with it, which will help uh, will grow back to grow faster than what it has been doing. So, um, go yeah, on, sir. Go on. Go on. Uh, what was the second part of your question? I was asking you about the role that you will hold post the deal completion. But before that, I mean, on to the previous point that you made. I mean, there are some quarters of the market that believe that, uh, you know, an, another company uh, within the same industry as you would, would probably been a better strategic fit. Uh, I believe there were some other companies in the fray like Amcor and Hutamaki. Was there any interest shown by them at all? Well, I, I'm bound by confidentiality not to reveal the name, but these two names were certainly not them, one of them. Okay. And what so, is this? So, obviously, we have taken uh, full, um, uh, I mean, taken all the points into consideration and what is best for all the stakeholders, that is the employees of the company, the customers, uh, the suppliers, um, and somebody who's willing to carry on the continuity and continuity theme is very strong um, uh, theme of of this discussion and alliance. And therefore, uh, also and 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 also the in terms of valuation. So obviously, everything has gone through a lot of negotiations. And this is the best uh, among all the offers that had come uh, finally emerged. I mean, so. So therefore, nobody is at any any sort of disadvantage in this case. Hmm. Mr. Goel, congratulations, Neeraj here. Uh, Thank you so much. Wondering, why would you, uh, when you were heading the company so well and the company was going in the right direction, why internal accruals you were putting, reducing the debt as well, why did you feel the need at this juncture for uh, moving out of the company, so to say, and getting in a private equity investor to run the company? That's a great point, Neeraj. Uh, and, and this is not something which is sudden. Uh, I'm a listed company, so obviously I was um, I was uh, I had a very uh, limited leeway for me to speak uh, before uh, before this sure. actually happened. So um, no, I've been toying with this idea for for a couple of years, and um, and um, I have worked uh, very hard um, uh, now for family reason. I have now a very young family so uh, my wife is of course the same as i married the first time okay uh, and um, and therefore i need to devote some time and uh, and enjoy while they are young and they are they are you know adorable okay so that's what i intend to do along with uh, the other business that i i run as part of my my portfolio Fair call. Um, just, just wondering, uh, you know, just to put uh, uh, rumors to rest, this entire s amount of 2,157 crores or thereabouts goes to a trust which is purely managed and owned by you. There is no connection that this deal has to the other SL group, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Neeraj. This is the beneficiary of this family trust is me and my immediate family. Okay. And yeah, so 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 this again, I'm reiterating that that any of this this timing seem little old, but uh, 
but i had started this process much earlier before any of the group issues were known right um and um and therefore this uh, has no bearing on on i have mean, no interconnection whatsoever in terms of financial or commercial we are a strong family larger family we care for each other that's a fact uh but financially commercially we are not interrelated at all right mr goel supposed your exit what happens to uh, you know the day to day running of sr propac and how does business carry on because you're in a relatively strong position right now sr propac's been growing at 10% while the industry average is closer to 2 to 3% so you uh, talking about carrying on that run rate of growth and and how do things fall into place in terms of your future role and how the functioning of the company goes on ahead yeah good point so so the growth rate i expect it to be even faster than 10 because the all the hard work that we have put in in terms of um, um getting inroads into pharmaceutical beauty and cosmetics uh, foods all those building blocks have been put in place all those hard hard work has been put by respective teams across the world so i believe this is the time for us to reap the benefit of of uh, accelerating the growth in in non oral care category so so therefore and and when the business is strong that's probably the right time now for 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 somebody to change uh, uh change the baton or if, if, if that's the right way to put it uh, as far as my role is concerned the management uh, entire management remains in that time uh, firmly on the saddle until at least until the regulatory approvals have come uh, which means the the competition commission uh, 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 and that that may take bit 2 to 4 four, four months so i am obviously carrying on as as you business as usual um, once that has come the, the the deal has been consummated um, that's when i start begin the uh, advisory role uh but the rest of the management continues as as is the continuity has been a main theme that that blackstone has also explained to me and which i liked about and um, and uh, therefore there is no disruption the customers are assured that there is all their touch points are going to remain the same so that's that's the happy thing no when when the people who have put in their hard and uh, sweat and hard work they are assured of continuity that that's a wonderful feeling and any changes to the board board of course board uh, will change uh, uh, because i need to be uh, declassified as promoter so by sebi law i cannot be on the board for 3 years uh which is fine and 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 so if i can't be that's that's what blackstone wanted me to be on the board but because of the regulatory restriction uh, they probably would think uh, some role as advisor to the board or something okay um yeah. mr goel appreciate you taking the time out and joining in thanks so much uh, for speaking to bloom aquint thank you so much yes appreciate it. thank you bye well that's um, ashok goel the well you could argue uh, still the the erstwhile promoter of sl pro pack now that the deal has happened Um, but interesting largest packaging company it was going fine just the last interaction they told us that they will uh, reduce debt by internal accruals because the business was looking okay but a change of hands to a private equity player uh, i don't know how a minority shareholder will look into this but the largest shareholder is getting out of the company that's yeah. one way to look at it the other way to look at it is that blackstone is coming in so deeper pockets more muscle to fight and therefore You know, it's Maybe interesting. It's interesting to be be invested because Blackstone, uh, when they bought into emphasis, as well, you know, that was the conversation that uh, you know, uh, a bigger uh, client base that emphasis can tap into. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're going to see that happen over a period of time, but it's it's not an immediate reflection of that. So. it's a private equity player at the end of the day yeah but with clients that they have maybe it could add to business for sl pro pack as well yeah and for them it's it's a good entry into the consumption space which they're anyway so bullish on yeah uh, ts hari hari with us uh, he's chief executive and founder of hr bv client solutions sari good having you thanks much for joining in morning do you track sl pro pack at all what are view on this on this deal from no. a minority shareholder perspective who still invested 
No, I think very clearly the promoters did not have a choice. Um, because, because, you know, we, we really need to see what is the linkage between... There is no linkage. He said that there is zero no, linkage. No, no, I understand. But, you know, there is a private uh, part of the whole deal which most of us are not aware of. Because Edison Power, which is the company that has issued uh, debt to all, uh, you know, all these mutual funds. Okay, you know, we don't know what is the structure of Edison. What we understand is that uh, most of the Goel Group companies have a no, stake no, in... No, but this is not a Goel Group company at all. This is a separate group company, no financial linkage to the Subhash Chandra Group. No, I understand. I'm not I'm talking about overall Goel Group, the SL Group. Yeah, okay. but SL Propact doesn't have debt from the Edison Group. No, no, I'm not talking of debt. We are talking of the ownership. See, hmm. there is some kind of an ownership structure because ultimately the ownership structure of uh, uh, Edison is not too clear at this point of time. Okay. Hmm. Now, what we understand is that most of the group companies of SL have some kind of an ownership stake in Edison. So, what you could see is, uh, it's, it's very surprising why uh, a company that is doing so well would have the promoter sell off the stake in such a hurry. I think what we understand is that this is probably the first step and we could see a lot more of the SL group companies selling off the stake and promoters using the funds to actually repay the loans. Because, see, what has happened is if you look at the breakup of the, uh, the, the FMPs uh, of uh, HDFC or any of the other funds, uh, you will find that the, the coverage is not two times as is normally in case of equity or promoter funding. It's about 1 to 1 1.2. Hmm. Which means the risk that uh, most of these funds are running is huge. So I think the pressure on all these group uh, promoters has been quite high. Now, as I said, you know, we don't know what is the back-end stake of all these group companies in uh, Edison Park. So we'll have to wait for that. But my understanding is the way this has been done in such a hurry, it looks very very clearly like a case where all these people have been called upon to contribute to the losses of the Z group. Well, um, just to um, give a follow-up to that, I think the promoter was quite clear out here that he has no connection to the Subhash Chandra Z group and none of the proceeds from this deal will be used in any way uh, for the debt issues for the Subhash Chandra Z group uh, while they are family, but this is only restricted to the Ashok Goel family group and they have no connection to the debt issues of the Z group as well. So just that clarity that the management already gave to us, so keep that at the back of your mind. Um, the other set of companies that are in focus today, aviation companies, Hari, what did you make of the data? Uh, see, I think um, uh, when we discussed about four, five days back, I was uh, telling you the same thing that in the way uh, jet is being sold off piecemeal by State Bank in the form of you know parking lots and in the form of uh, aircraft, I think it was very clear that there is no intent to revive jet. So I think whatever is going to happen in the next few days is that the the so-called uh, market share that jet had, I think, is going to be gradually distributed over the other players. So uh, I think that is what. But we have to really see how this thing shapes up because you know there is a huge minority shareholders of jet who are probably going to get nothing out of the deal. Uh, you know, there are operational creditors, again, who are going to get nothing out of the deal. Uh, there are bankers who at best could get about 20%. And, you know, as we have seen yesterday, most of the original bidders, including Etihad, have actually backed out because they're not comfortable buying a company when they don't know what is there in the company. So I think, uh, uh, in my view, the entire jet case has got substantially complicated. And we'll have to wait out for the next few days to see what happens. Nonetheless, uh, yesterday's session, after opening lower 20%, the stock actually bounced back and just at close, uh, traded absolutely flat. But obviously, this is the closing uh, that happened, which was still 6% under, but it did manage to prop itself back up. So it uh, wasn't all that bad an ending, considering that the rest of the market itself was down so heavily. But we'll talk about all of that and more with Hari and our technical experts when they join us in a bit. But uh, we've got a research team ready with us to take us through some more stocks and news uh, in today's session, as well as some uh, numbers that came out and how uh, those could pan out as we open up for trade. So Mishika, Nikki, both of them here with us. Mishika, we'll start with you first. Yeah, so there's big news news coming in from Paramal Enterpri Enterprises. Uh, Anand Paramal is in preliminary discussion with uh, Ajay Paramal is in preliminary discussion with Anand Mahindra and others as he looks to exit Sri Ram group of companies uh, the off uh, on offer as takes in three companies that Sri Ram Capital, Sri Ram Transport and Sri Ram City Union Finance which is valued at around 9000 crore rupees. Uh, Paramal owns 20% in Sri Ram Capital and 10% each in Sri Ram Transport and Sri Ram City Union Finance. When Gale emerges as the highest bidder for Island FS Wind Energy Assets and offers 4,800 crore rupees portfolio of wind assets, the total debt of the wind portfolio stands at 3,700 crore rupees and there will be no haircut of lenders as uh, reported by the Island FS in the Island FS statement. 
when McClure Russell executes sale agreement for specified assets from its three estates to Lakshmi T for 150 crore rupees. Earlier, the company had entered into a non-binding term sheet with Saffron Enclave for sale of specified assets of the aforesaid three estates, which has expired on March 31st. And lastly, Biocon uh, to consider issuing of bonus shares on April 25th. Abhishekha, thanks very much for that. Nikki, some mornings. Yeah, three earnings that I'm addressing. Most of them are good. Uh, I'll start off with Lux Industries. Steady set of number coming in from the company, at least on the top line front. We're looking at a 16% uptick there, 385 crore compares to a figure of around 332 crore. And net profitability of the company, that's gone higher by as much as 23%. But if you look at the operational performance of the company, uh, a 2.5% decline, aberrations of sorts, inventory loss weighing in. Uh, but however, you'd see uh, that the profitability of the company has improved on account of the decline that we've seen in finance cost which is percolated down on the bottom line performance of the company margins for the company have also shrunk to 14 percent as compared to 17 percent mainly on account of the faster growth that we've seen on the top line as compared to that of the operational uh, numbers Tejas networks that again good set of numbers reported by the company top line we're looking at 2.7 times uptick there more than two and a half times uptick there 273 crore compares to a number of around 100 odd crore net profitability of the company has stood at 35 crore as compared to 32 crore that's a jump of as much as 10 percent despite the sharp jump that we're looking in uh, the operation numbers mainly on account of that deferred tax uh, which is uh, amounted to around 24 odd crore in this quarter which is weighed on the uh, bottom line performance of the company AU small finance bank strong NII which is percolated well down on the bottom line performance and the asset quality of the bank overall has improved NII up by 35 percent net profitability is up by 42 percent and GNPA that's improved sequentially 2% compared to that of 2.09% uh, that we've seen sequentially for the bank. Back to you. Right. Thanks a lot for that, guys, Nikki, as well as Mushika. Uh, Tess, we'd like to come to you, actually, on these, uh, you know, small finance banks. And, you know, uh, through this, this turmoil, you've actually seen uh, them hold steady foot. And, and this time around, even numbers show it. And I think even quarter three, it wasn't that bad a quarter for at least the small finance banks. Uh, so would you be uh, an investor within the financials in the small finance banks? Um, see, I think a couple of things that have happened. You know, number one, I think these uh, banks have managed to maintain their NPS under fairly good control. So if you look at AU Finance, I think the GNPS was roughly a little over 2%, I think, which is a fairly comfortable situation to be in. Um, no, I think my, my only uh, qu question is, um, what is going to be the position of these banks? I think that is not very clear at this point of time. Um, because the big question, if you are looking at higher valuations for these banks, the big question is going to be, what is going to be the growth driver? I think that is probably not too clear at this point of time. And I think till that happens, the, the general investor preference will continue to be for the more established uh, private bank names rather than the small finance banks. Okay. Uh, numbers look decent. Uh, we'll talk uh, about uh, the other one as well, which is uh, Tejas Networks in a moment from now, because that was the other set of number which looked very, very robust. Let's wait and watch if the stock has some merit uh, or no. The profit numbers may have looked muted, but the EBITDA numbers were quite spectacular. We'll talk about that in a bit. But it's time now to focus a bit on the charts as well. Start off with our special segment, Bloomberg Edge, wherein Yash Upadhyay tells us about a pattern that the Bloomberg terminal has thrown up on a stock. Yash, what's the stock on your radar today? Morning, Neeraj. So we are looking at Excite Industries, and uh, we have seen some amount of weakness coming in into the counter. Uh, it has, in fact, fallen close to 5% over the last two days, and the stochastics indicator, that has given a negative crossover as well. Uh, before we start, as we, as we usually do, let's first try and understand what the stochastics indicator is and how do we interpret it. So stochastics basically is a trend following momentum oscillator. It helps you identify when a price move is overextended as it measures the current price relative to its highest highs and lowest lows. Now, how do you interpret it? Overbought is above the mark of 70, oversold is below uh, 30, and uh, any crossover that indicates a, a buy or a sell signal. In case of Excite Industries, what we've seen is that the uh, stochastics line that has crossed below uh, the blue line over here, that has crossed below the white line and has given a negative crossover. Uh, in the case or on the price chart as well, we are looking at the, the white line over here. That is the crucial 50-day moving average, and historically, 
Obviously, we are looking at the six-month daily price chart. Every time uh, the 50-day moving average has acted as a key resistance mark uh, for the counter. It managed to surpass that mark, uh, but it has not able to hold on to it. And with the weakness that we've seen over the last two trading sessions, it has yet again fallen below the 50-day moving average. Uh, should one look to go uh, short from these levels, they can also go. Uh, they can also, uh, you know, sell on rise close to the 50-day moving average, uh, as there could be, uh, you know, significant amount of weakness in the counter. How well has this worked in the past, Yash? Devina, three out of the last five times that this has managed to happen on the charts in the last one year, uh, the hit rate has been very successful. In fact, close to uh, about five odd percent over the next one month. Okay, got that. Thanks a lot for that, Yash. That is Bloomberg Edge uh, that we highlighted today and talking about uh, Exide. Let's take a look uh, now at some more calls from the technical perspective. Hadrian Manonka and Amit Harshekar, both of them are here with us. Let's start on the index first. Hadrian, I'll start off with you. Yesterday's session, uh, we saw a close below that uh, 11,600 mark. What's your sense of whether this is just uh, you know, a, a one-time profit-taking move that we've seen on the indices, primarily on the back of oil and gas and banks, or there could be more structural weakness? No, absolutely not. Uh, you know, uh, as of now, there is uh, there is no change in uh, you know the overall structure as of now. Uh, the only cause of concern is the double top pattern that uh, has been created. But coming to the last two days, uh, uh, you know the way markets have behaved, uh, uh, the the uh, the weakness has actually dragged Nifty lower towards its uh, previous uh, flag break uh, flag breakout zone. Uh, you know that uh, has turned out to be a very important breakout zone for Nifty in the previous uh, uh, week. Uh, also, uh, apart from that, if you've noticed that. 29 March gap of 11,570 uh, is going to act as an important crucial support, and the 11th April lows of 11,605 has yet has yet not been broken by the Nifty on the future side. So I think uh, you know uh, this zone of 11,600, 11,570 uh, is going to act as a very important uh, uh, you know support area. So keeping 11,570 at the stop loss, I would actually uh, go ahead and long um, uh, Nifty April futures, uh, expecting a target of uh, 11. 1,720 on the upside. Mm -hmm. Amit, what about your call on the indices? Uh, well, I would be quite uh, negative on the market. Uh, basically, if you see the entire structure of this market, we have, formed, we have seen Nifty forming a higher highs, but RSI has been forming a lower lows. That's a clearly negative divergence. And most importantly, if you see on the global front, crude is about to give a breakout about $75. And we believe in the coming weeks, we expect Brent crude to settle around $80 to $85. So we expect that to have a major pressure on financial stocks. And overall, if you see, as I, we were mentioning, that major buying price of Nifty uh, of FIs in the Nifty futures, that stood at around 11,650. We did not even move beyond 2% gains from that level. And we saw a good amount of selling at around 11,800 levels. Right now, since the prices have breached that 11,650 mark, we think there would be a cash base selling in this market in the coming days, and we expect Nifty to settle all, all around uh, 11,300 to 400, which could even happen uh, even till the expiry time. Okay. What about uh, specific stocks? Amit, if I can come to you, your stock recommendations for the day? Uh, well, first stock recommendation would be uh, going short on Infosys. Here, though we had a positive closing on Infosys in yesterday's trade, but if you see the entire structure, we have seen a breakdown from a rising wedge and that too with a, a spurt in volumes. The long-term chart of Infosys now is projecting a target of 620 in the near term. So we remain extremely cautious. Uh, if you are recommending going short at these levels, short-term stop loss on a closing basis would be 750, and we are expecting a short-term target of 675. Uh, second trade would be uh, going short on Bajaj Finance. Here the rational is uh, the stock has clearly given a breakdown from a diamond top pattern, and we expect now uh, the stock to take support at around 2800 to 2850. Short-term resistance on a closing basis would be at around 3070, so we would suggest that to be kept as a stop loss. Interesting uh, to see how this one shapes up. Waiting for Bajaj Finance results simply because HDB Financial posted numbers which were slightly wobbly, not an apple-to-apple -apple comparison, but both of them operate in pretty much the same set of business and of the same pedigree. But it's so, never been a disappointment, at least over the recent past from Bajaj Finance. Yeah. And the management has been super strong in terms of their commentary also the kind of business prospects that they have. So yeah. it's going to be an interesting watch. So fundamentally, that may be the case. Amit believes technically there is a short trade out here in Bajaj Finance. Hadron, what about your stock ideas? 
Uh, so I have a long and a short. Uh, so the uh, the stock that we are slightly bearish on is uh, Shriram Transport Finance Several Futures. Uh, we are seeing a descending triangle pattern breakdown on the stock and also key uh, moving averages have been breached uh, on the downside. So I think one can consider going short on a Shriram Transport Finance April Futures, expecting a target of 1153 on the downside, keeping a strict stop loss at 1181.5 on the upside. The stock that we are slightly bullish on in the near term is a UPL. Uh, if you have noticed, the stock is holding out uh, pretty firm and is also consolidating, uh, uh, you know, uh, closed uh, above its uh, past two days uh, uh, close as well. So I think uh, these are signs that the stock may go ahead and outperform going forward. So in the short term, we are expecting a, a target of uh, 960, keeping a stop loss at uh, 925.5. All right, lots of movers in yesterday's session and there was uh, bleeding out of private sector banks, or not just on the index, but otherwise as well. You've got a Yes Bank, which was down 6%. And not to forget the oil marketing companies and the oil and gas pack, which was the worst sectoral performer, was down about 3 odd percent, led lower not just by oil marketing companies, but you had stocks like Petronet, LNG giving up, Oil India, Gale, ONGC. Everything crumbled under pressure in yesterday's session uh, on the back of the possibility of those uh, waivers on the sanctions to Iran uh, getting uh, revoked. So uh, that is something that kept, and also the crude oil prices, which uh, you know clocked in above $74 per barrel, that kept them in check. Reliance Industries was down on the back of uh, slightly disappointing numbers too. Hari, any thoughts here? Uh, Petronet or some of the other oil and gas companies because of this impending waivers? No, I think uh, uh, broadly downstream, you know, if you look at uh, <coughs> refining plus um, uh, the, the marketing, especially the marketing, I think the pressure is going to stay because uh, the the the, uh, the way crude has been go going up, I think 3.3% up in a single day, I don't think that's a very good signal. And if you look at the hedge fund data that's coming out, there are huge longs that have got built up and the, the average target that uh, traders are looking at on crude is about 80 to $83. So I think mm. that's that's a huge upside. And, you know, for a, for a country like India with about 82% dependence on import oil, that's a huge cost. Uh, the bigger uh, issue as far as the, the oil marketing companies is that we are in election season. You know, So probably within now in the next two or three months even if crude goes up, the government may not be too keen to pass on the high, you know the, 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 the price hikes. So we may see BP and HP taking some kind of hit. So we saw that about four or five months back. So we could again see that happening with the, the oil marketing companies taking a hit on uh, in, in the form of oil subsidies. So I think uh, definitely oil downstream stays under pressure. Till the time oil again comes back to lower levels, I would believe downstream stays under a lot of pressure. Sure. All right, and uh, for oil marketing companies particularly, quarter one is going to be important because it's this election period also that's coming, which is not allowing them to raise any fuel costs. Asia is a pocket looking weak. Uh, SGX is still holding its head in the green and not all that bad, a tenth of a percent higher. We'll see. Pre open ticks up on your screen, flattish to slightly negative on the nifty. On Sensex, we're up about eight tenths of a percent, but it's going to be yet again a day where you're going to watch out for individual stocks and what happens. Uh, thereabouts, particularly to the oil and gas pack. Also watch out for the currency and the bond deals. Remember yesterday's session was at a two-month high for the 10-year bond. Currencies looked weak, almost half a percent given up in yesterday's session. Slightly, uh, uh, I believe, slightly uh, stronger in today's session. 69.61 is what you've got on the currency. Uh, the bond deals should come up as well. And then we take a look at individual counters. So 7.47 continues to strengthen and continues uh, to look a little heady. So this is definitely uh, the highest since the last two months that we've seen. Among stocks, biggest loser right now is Bharat Theatre, which is down 6.2%. Following that, after that big 8%, 9% drop on India Bulls Housing Finance yesterday, the opening has been lower as well in today's session. So around 700 for India Bulls Housing Finance is down 4%. BPCL down 1.7%. Power Grid, IOC both looking weak. Kotak Mahindra Bank, Yes Bank's down marginally, but uh, that's okay. Amongst the gainers, Aisha Motors up 1.5%, Asian Paints, Maruti, Vipro, and Z are doing okay. Remember yesterday's session was all about IT leading from the front. Yeah, but broader markets, uh, Devina Jet Airways, uh, looks like it could have a decent start if these rates are to be believed, but let's wait and watch. Another stock in the news is SL Pro Pack, and let's see if that is reacting to the deal and the open offer price. Marginal reaction, and this is what could be anticipated, nothing dramatic otherwise. All that cat flying about the uh, uh, bogey of uh, this group being a part of the SL group and therefore uh, Blackstone coming in and therefore that uh, derating moving out my, my, my was probably just kite flying. Um, one more stock and which is uh, Tejas Networks. S optically strong set of numbers on their bit tough run. 
for now showing a reaction. Let's wait and watch if this one tends to move up further. A couple of others, AU Small Finance Bank, uh, for example, came out with numbers which looked optically decent too. NI growth of about 35 odd percent, if I'm not wrong, 620. Let's wait and watch if there is more in store. We'll wait for these rates to settle before we talk more with our um, and, and mark them. But first, before we get back to our experts, let's uh, get in Samit Sarkaru Johnson with the top brokerage calls of the day. Samit, good morning yet again. Uh, good morning, Neeraj. On the big brokerage calls for the day, first we have is Deutsche Bank on Indian cement companies. Now, according to the brokerage, cost leaders are focusing on profitability, which is a positive sign for the industry, says the brokerage. However, on the demand side, it says that the growth has moderated to 6-7% recently and for the month of April, it is likely to be below 5%. Now, for a recovery of demand, Monsoon holds the key, says the brokerage. Lastly, on prices, it says that they are up nearly 10% on the year-to-date basis on Pan-India uh, across... A across India and across the board and on the back of this they have hiked the target price for all the cement companies in their coverage. Now the major hikes have come in for Shree Cement and Ultratech where they have for Shree Cement they have hiked the target price to 21,600 from 19,300 for while well, for Ultratech they have hiked the target price to 4575 from 4,240. The second note we have is on Indian auto companies where CLSA sees a very few reasons to turn positive on the industry outlook given the regulatory cost push, slower growth and high competition that we have been seeing. However, for the key auto stocks, the brokerage has pointed out factors that could lead to a potential upside. Now for Hero, where it has a sell rating, it says that the potential success of new products could boost its earnings and valuations. For Bajaj Auto, where also it has a sell rating, it says that a strong growth in high margin export business is the key upside for the company while for TVS where also it has a sell rating it says the market share gains could drive upside for the stock now for Aisha where it has an outperform rating it says that the risk of a larger underperformance compared to the industry could be the only risk for the company going forward right Salman thanks very much for that how do you want to come in on autos the month of April has not been bad at all you're going to see Marzi reporting its numbers this week. And brokerages are starting to look slightly more optimistic now on the prospects of uh, volumes picking up and the overall uh, you know, growth in exports, increase in market share individually for these companies. Uh, see, again, you know, uh, I've been saying for some time that after a 25% correction in the auto index in the last one year, I think there are definitely pockets of value that are emerging. You know, And I was mentioning stocks like Maruti and Tata Motors, which are definitely looking to be, I think, fairly good bets at this point of time. Now, uh, the, the big question is auto has always been interesting for the reason that there has been top-line growth. Now, I think that is what is probably going to falter in the next two or three quarters. So, unless the top-line growth comes back, there is no big investment case that gets built up. But yes, definitely I think a Maruti down from 10,000 to 6,800 makes a case. Tata Motors down from about 580 to 180 did make a case. So I think very specific pockets are there, but overall auto space, we continue to stay negative. Did you have a, do you have a view on Tejas Networks? So the company came out with what looked like a good set of numbers. Yeah, optically, yes, numbers do look good, but you know, uh, if you look at the last one year price movement, the stock has been extremely volatile. I think 520 on the upside, 160 on the downside, or 120 on the downside. Um, so I, I, I think um, the, the sector that the, uh, or the space that the company operates in, it's a fairly niche space. So I don't think there's too much of competition on that particular space. It's into you know, telecom, hardware, equipment. So I think that is definitely a, uh, a fairly niche space. And I think a 10% growth in the net profit and about a, a much higher growth in the EBITDA is definitely positive. I, I think at these prices about 180, the downside is, does, not, does not seem to be too high. So probably as a short term trade, yes. As a long term bet, we are still a little kg on the stock. Okay. Um, yeah, but as, as, as Eri was saying, I think there's a deferred tax income in the last quarter, which is why the bottom line numbers haven't looked as strong as the EBITDA growth. EBIT, this is the deferred income tax in income. Uh, tax income of 24 crores in the base quarter, as a result of which the net profit looks up only 9.5%. But look at the EBITDA and look at the EBITDA margins. Quite spectacular margins at 19.3 versus 10.5. Let's see if this is more in store. Hari believes that the downside might be limited in this one, if somebody wants to look at it. Just wondering from a trade perspective, because it's been such a volatile stock, Hidden Mendonka, have you looked at Tejas Networks at all? It might start off 3 4% higher. Can somebody trade this one? 
Yes, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, because of the results, we could see uh, a gap up opening. And I think uh, the way uh, um, the prices are moving in the past three to four weeks, there is definite signs that uh, the stock is making an attempt to bottom out at around these levels. I think it's very important uh, uh, after the 2 to 3 percent uptick that we see in the opening trade sustains above 195, 197 zone, because that is uh, the, uh, the important uh, uh, resistance that I would like to see uh, take this move beyond. So because before, uh, beyond 195, I think I would uh, definitely uh, consider going long because then the next level of resistance comes uh, around 220 to 225 levels. So definitely one can go long, but uh, you know, sustainance of 197 would be crucial to look at. Okay, so <laughs> do watch out for Tejas Networks uh, from, a, that, from that perspective. The other space which is maybe difficult to trade is aviation. And Amit, I want you to come in here. Uh, jet airways might be tricky, but if you have a thought here, then great. Um, and if not, any trades on SpiceJet or Interglobe Aviation? Well, jet airways, uh, I was expecting the stock to take a good support at around uh, 170 on a closing basis, but even data has got violated. So I think now the stock is into a clear downtrend. New trade uh, tra uh, zone, trading zone has emerged, which is between 135 and uh, 170 on the upside. Uh, I would say Indigo is the one stock which still continues to remain into an uptrend, provided we do not see a closing below 1378. So from a uh, trading perspective, I would be buying it around uh, 1470, 1475 zone and keep a stop loss of 1400. If that gets violated, I would uh, exit the long trades. Okay. Uh, the other one was Yes Bank after falling 6% yesterday. Um, the stock currently trades in the green by just a quarter of a percent or so. Adrian, would you short a Yes Bank? No, see, Yes Bank has fallen pretty significantly in the past two days and what has happened, it has actually once again approached its uh, previous uh, breakout zone and uh, that breakout zone was exactly on the 13th of March. So it has once again retraced the whole, uh, you know, breakup move uh, that we saw in the past two to three weeks. So I think uh, ideally going, uh, you know, uh, by pure technicals, I think this is a very ideal uh, levels where you can consider going long. Uh, keeping uh, uh, yesterday's low as a 237 or 235 uh, with a cushion of two bucks. Uh, keeping that as a stop loss, one can consider going long on a Yes Bank. But I think uh, uh, one should avoid shorting Yes Bank at these levels. Uh, more importantly, because uh, uh, I would uh, uh, turn a negative on a Yes Bank only if 235, 234 is broken and closed below the same. Till then, I will actually be a contra buyer in Yes Bank. Okay. Uh, Jamin, stay on. So much more to talk about. We are just a few minutes away from market opening. So let's tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade today. First up, Blackstone set to acquire SL Pro Pack. The private equity firm will take control of 51% stake held by Ashok Goel Trust. The deal will trigger an open offer for an additional 26% stake in the company. Aviation passenger growth grew at its slowest pace in five years as Jet Airways and SpiceJet were forced to ground planes for different reasons. ACC will announce its March quarter earnings today. Analyst estimates suggest revenue growth of 8.6%. Profit may rise 35% year-on-year basis. In earnings that came out yesterday, Tejas Network posted a strong quarter revenue surge 2.7 times. Margins expanded to 19.3% versus 10.5% year-on-year. In other results, AU Small Finance Bank recorded steady earnings. Net interest income went up by 35% and Lux Industries clocked in 15% revenue growth in revenue. Lastly, Gale has emerged the highest bidder for RNFS's wind energy assets. The state-run gas company is ready to offer 4,800 crores for its wind portfolio. Let's wait and watch what happens there, Hari. By any chance, any thoughts on Lux Industries or the entire space? No, I, I, I don't. Uh, you don't try that space at all. Lux, okay. Yeah. Would you be? Uh, are you looking to put park uh, invest some money right now currently? And if so, uh, which which theme, which stock? See, um, I think I was mentioning last time that the overall sector we are looking at is consumers. Hmm. So, you know, uh, we have very specific uh, uh, stocks we have opted for, like Britannia is one, uh, Havels is another. So, you know, stocks that are not really, I would say, contingent on what happens to the elections, what is the nature of the government, what is the color of the, uh, you know, government that gets formed. So, irrespective of that, I think we look at stocks like Havels and uh, Britannia as a kind of a very defensive pick. And as I said, these are smart beta stocks. So, we don't look at them as outperforming the market in a big way. But largely, these are smart beta stocks. Probably they can give you about 2 to 3% more than what the index can give you. Okay. 
Watch out. Some of the consumer names is what uh, Hari seems to be betting on. As the pre-open rates settle down, Bharti, of course, X writes and therefore this stick Deina. But Gale starts off 2% lower. Mm. The pressure, though, on India Bulls housing finance continues after that 8% downtick yesterday. Another percent and a half, 724 and counting. Somehow this seems to be caught in the eye of the storm. And even Divan Housing Finance, actually, if you go to see, yesterday's session was primarily on the back of that crystal downgrade for its commercial paper. Uh, but in today's session, the stock has opened weaker as well. So housing finance companies in the eye of the storm. Uh, you know, over the last few months, Neeraj, you've actually seen some amount of divergence. While you've got a camp in homes and a Repco home finance, which have actually managed to do well compared to uh, a Divan Housing Finance. But it looked like uh, yesterday's session kind of reversed that. Today's session, again, some weakness in Repco, but Canfin Homes has still been managing to do well. It's got a positive open right now. Any trade, uh, Adrian, on these housing finance companies? Yeah, Indiman Housing Finance uh, specifically is looking pretty weak. In fact, after yesterday's move, we have seen a rising channel pattern breakdown as well. So I think uh, you know going long should uh, should be completely avoided because uh, the stance has completely changed. Uh, I think Indiman Housing Finance is headed lower towards the. Um, towards the 685, uh, 690 zone. So and that is where one can consider going long, uh, not right now. Okay. Well, that's a fair point too. Um, Hari, before we thank you, just one final thought. Uh, just looking at the Nifty 500 gainers and losers over the last few days or in today's session as well, there's a note that has come out on cement, hmm. arguing that prices are set to rise and therefore valuations are in favour, etc. ACC comes up in numbers. Any cement stock that you find favourable? We, we would really wait to watch these top line growth <coughs> story, you know, because we've heard this quite often in the past, but I don't think it's really materialized. Uh, but even if we were to buy a, a stock, I think we would probably prefer a South Bay stock, you know, where the traction of price hikes is a lot more than the West and the North. So probably. Yeah, but they tell end up reversing those price hikes nonetheless. Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, we would probably pr prefer something like a, a, you know, a Pradeshni cement or a, a, an India cement which is south based rather than any of these north or west based companies where I think the, the, the price traction is going to be much lower going ahead. Okay. Ari, take a moment to thank you for joining in today and giving us your perspective. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Let's stay yesterday around the fundamentals. Just about a minute left for the markets to kickstart trade. Watch out. Deutsche Bank came out with a very interesting note on cement, so it could be interesting to see what happens to ACC and Sri. But uh, top stocks in the session today. Amit Harchekar, if I were to come to you first, your top call for the day today. Howard, I would be buying a Lupin on a uh, decline towards uh, 830. Stop loss would be 810, and I expect the stock to move towards 860. All right, that's Lupin uh, that uh, Amit was talking about. Hadrian, what is your top call for the day? Yeah, I'll go on a short on a BPCL. We are seeing a clear inverse uh, uh, flag pattern breakdown. We're expecting a target of 320, keeping a stop loss at uh, 348.5. Okay, watch out for both of these names. Uh, Hadrian, uh, Amit, just stay on, gentlemen, for a minute. We'll just take in your opening thoughts post market open and then let you go. It would be interesting to see how. The reactions on some of the individual stocks are considering that we might start off mildly positively today. Uh, the pre-open rates seem to suggest that the tick could sticks, opening ticks could be in the green. The question is, can they last? But here are the rates this Tuesday morning after what was arguably a very brutal Monday. The start is in the green. Not a bad sign from a bull's perspective. Let's see if they hold. Bank Nifty, which is the top loser yesterday, about 50 odd points in the green. Uh, but flattens out completely or very, very quickly, let me put it that way. Nifty 50, just about 11 odd points. Uh, Sensex 2, just about 45 odd points. And I doubted the mid caps and the small caps would be doing something dramatically different. So we'll probably have a start which is flattish for the mid caps and the small caps too. 23 odd points for the mid cap space, small caps about 18 odd points. Let's bring up the heat map and show you what's happening. Is it even Stevens or is it more in favor of the red? No, it's, it is even Stevens. What's moving up? Z Entertainment. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I must re-emphasize that there is no benefit that goes into the uh, other Z group as a result of the SL Pro Pack deal. So please keep that in the back of your mind. However, uh, the market has its ways. The stock is higher. Bharti Airtel, about a percent and a half higher in trade. Indescent Bank, about a percent higher. ITC and Dr. Reddy's, but no big newsmakers which are really moving around in the session today. What about the losers? Gale, about two and a half percent lower in trade. BPCL about a percent and a half lower in trade. IOC about a percent lower in trade. So all marketing companies continue to grind lower. Yes Bank has some weakness to itself. India World's Housing Finance has some weakness to itself. So I think that's the mix. Uh, all marketing companies and 
uh, OMCs are the ones which are in the red. Um, IT is not in the top 10 gainers list, quite unlike yesterday. The one which is doing well is by sheer accident, Z Entertainment. However, a couple of stocks that just I want to highlight or maybe a trend makers before I hand it over to Devina. Uh, firstly, a stock that came out with, I thought, some really good set of numbers is Tejas Network, 6.5% higher, a bit top five times, no surprise there, that Tejas Networks is doing what it is doing. And then the aviation companies, and let's see what they are doing in trade today, they are in focus. Jet Airways is up 5%, it moved into the green yesterday after an 18% downtick, up 5%, Integlobe Aviation up about a percent, and SpiceJet about 1.8% higher in trade. So aviation is doing rather well for itself. Devina, what are you spotting? Uh, we'll start to first with uh, uh, Linde India, which is up about 5 odd percent. We spoke about Lupin, I think that was Amit's uh, top call idea for the day, and that is up 2.5%. Uh, Leap of Fertilizers moves up about 2.5%. Uh, you've got the likes of India Bulls Real Estate, not a bad start. Yesterday also actually India Bulls Real Estate traded in the green for a majority part of the day, it was up about 3 odd percent. Uh, you've got Z Learn, which is up 2%. Then in uh, Uflex and Ipka Labs, uh, these are doing well. Radico Ketan, uh, which up until now has been in a, a, a little bit of a limbo because of the, the higher raw material costs, dip in volumes. Last few days has seen a comeback and the stock in today's session, and open at least, is doing relatively well. Uh, other stocks then, PC Jewelers is down. Yesterday again was down, so there was a lot of heavy profit taking considering the stock, stock had run up pretty significantly in just the recent two weeks. And remember, this stock is nonetheless moving out of the future as an option segment. Uh, you've got uh, Needlewise, which is down 2% at 168. Gale continues to look weak. Divan Housing Finance, after yesterday's 10% uh, drop, continues to look weak. And Berger Paints is down 1, 1.5%. So you're going to watch out for, um, you know, the tyre companies, the paint companies, considering crude oil price uh, levels of about $74 uh, per barrel. Getting in some quick opening thoughts then from both our technical experts, uh, Adrian as well as Amit. Amit, um, you know, you already spoke about Lupin, but keeping in mind the opening now, anything else that you're going to be keeping your eye out for? Maybe not a tr taking a trade right now, but watching it closely, either on the upside or downside. See, we think uh, banks are poised for a further decline. In fact, ICICI Bank, we think the stock has already found a bearish wedge on a closing basis. And we believe after rebounding back to 397, we expect another leg of decline all the way towards uh, 380. So would suggest uh, even going short on ICICI Bank at these levels. Stop loss would be 405 on a closing basis and first target would be at around 385. Uh, and second would be uh, we expect even Z to take some uh, uh, profit taking after today's move because 410 turns out to be a major resistance zone. Uh, we are seeing stocks are continuously sustaining below that. So we are expecting even Z2 fall back towards 375 zone. Okay. Adrian, what about you? Yeah, I'd continue to reinforce my view, you know, that there is definitely merit in going long uh, in the short term on the Nifty. So, uh, you know, uh, unless and until the, uh, the 11,570 mark is not broken, I think uh, going long would be a good idea. Uh, 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 target would be close to 11,720, uh, 11,750. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, both of you, thank you so much for taking the time out and joining us and giving us your time. Really appreciate it. Let's get in our big fundamental voice of the day. Vikas Kimani, founder at Cardinal Capital Advisors, joins us right now on the show. Vikas, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you joining us on such a short notice. Uh, but just wondering whether the markets will, um, or what's your sense of what happens in the intermediate period of volatility, uh, and how do we navigate through that? Hi, Neeraj. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, on the show with you. Uh, I think you know we are in that phase of the market where you know we have you know sort of somewhat uh, good news, somewhat bad news, and I think in whenever these kind of things are there, you will find volatility being very high. Uh, of course, in a political front, I think the, the worry seems to be settling down, but the results are not yet out. So we are in that phase of one month period where you will see. Uh, you know, uh, different permutations, combinations playing out. And I think to make matter a little more worrisome, I think the oil prices rise uh, has kind of added a bit of worry. So I think, you know, th th these kind of situations will always be kind of uh, uh, bringing volatility. But by and large, I feel that, you know, uh, directionally, if I were to look at from medium term to longer term pers perspective, you know, things are under control, things are looking incrementally better. Once I think the political outcome is then the new government is in place, there will be direction. 
uh, globally i think uh, scenario is turning to be in favor of india a mild slowdown in the growth is a good scenario for india uh, you know locally i think you know we will see after uh, you know this event in in couple of quarters the earnings uh, going to st start picking up uh, inflation is under control of course we have to watch out oil how it gets you know i think oil is a probably a temporary situation we are not seeing it getting out of hand uh, in a big way but you know that's a one big risk open risk which we have to constantly keep a watch you can never be sort of complacent about it uh, and i think so so directionally i would say one should keep in mind that india is well placed for medium term to long term perspective but you know any such kind of volatility happens you know one should use this as an opportunity to kind of build the portfolio and i would say in this period one should avoid leverage because i think you know uh, when these kind of significant events are around you you should uh, always be a bit wise because market movement tends to be pretty sharp uh, and you know at time short lived as well so you know that that's one approach but medium term to long term perspective directionally from macro fundamental perspective is uh, reasonably falling into place in the right direction mm. do you see any big spanner in the works for this rally or no because you might just have periods where you have these air pockets in the market looks a bit turbulent but then it comes back to reverting to mean and the overall trend like you said continues to remain more positive so as i said that i think directionally we are quite positive i don't see too much of worry of course i would love to see lot more pick up on the demand and the ground level uh you know uh, and i think that will take some time in my opinion it is not bad but i think that it can be lot more better than what it is you know today and we have seen in last three years time and again one or two shocks keep coming and that has kind of impacted the demand scenario uh, you know so i think and it takes time for it to recover uh, you know and we we will see that but at the same time i believe that directionally it's positive and you know this kind of corrections should be looked at as in a Uh, opportunities you, you will see this kind of reversion to i don't believe that you know markets are overly uh, expensive of course you know you have to look at the investable pockets uh, you cannot you know look at market with a broad brush but investable pockets you will find interesting uh, uh, place to kind of look at it and uh, that's how i i you know uh, look at market at this point in time hmm. from an earning standpoint vikas uh, we are already into quarter 4 now and story by steadily we are getting earnings trickling in um for the end of the year what would you say would be a reasonable earnings projection and starting off fy20 that's when most of the consensus uh, opinion comes in with regards to earnings growth probably even trying to nudge about 18 19% So yes I think you know um, 18 19 could have been better but for ILFS uh, or credit crisis which is hit, hit India uh, and I think that had a severe impact across the sectors and also along with that there was a you know foreign exchange uh, uh, you know volatility as well so both of the put together had impact across industries I mean you can't you probably look at any industry which did not get impacted I am assuming that I think and it will still take time to settle down as the credit picks up in the system uh, and the currency settles down the Q1 also, in my opinion, one should not expect a broad-based uh, rally. I think Q2, Q3 onwards, you start seeing uh, pick up in the in the in the you know earnings in a slightly broader-based manner. Having said that, we have already seen uh, you know uh, some of the banks results you know uh, which has come out. I think doing pretty well. IT companies are doing all right. So I think you know and auto companies I feel will start uh, you know once the inventory gets cleared, you will start seeing seeing picking. So I think it would be good to assume that you know a 1920. Uh, unless some another shock comes which we cannot foresee today uh, you know, it's good to assume that you know at least uh, you know 15 to 20% kind of earnings growth uh, uh, quite visible and possible in 1920 because uh, we haven't had too many banking names come out thus far but two mid sized banks one hdfc bank come out with numbers the expectation is that this quarter will be that final that that quarter where we will finally see banks at large deliver growth uh, corporate facing banks will do that and some of the private sector banks would continue on the merry ways hdfc bank is a prime example there uh, what's your stance here uh, fairly owned and fairly valued or do you believe because of the upcoming uh, beta or the alpha in growth numbers that will come in or the delta in growth numbers that will come in uh, is it worthwhile to take a fresh look at some of the financials Oh, I have no doubt in my mind, uh, Neeraj, that this market rally will be led and you know sustained by the financials, and banks form a very big part of that uh, basket. 
and also let's not forget that you know banks still provide large part of the credit to the economy and without credit growth we don't have a growth on the, in the economy so you will see and we have had fairly large you know long period of you know stagnancy uh, and also more importantly psus are ceding market share to the uh, private uh, banks slowly and steadily uh, now two things to play here one is i think you have to look at the banks like hdfc or indusind which have been delivering reasonably good less corporate focused more retail focused have been giving you know reasonably good growth i think there you could see little bit of acceleration but at least continuity of the same growth profile because they are reasonably valued as well so you can capture you know earnings growth equivalent returns in in your portfolio second basket which is very important is i think uh, the corporate facing banks uh, such as icic bank axis and some more uh, which have been kind of suffering from a fairly large you know uh, hit on their profitability because of the npa cycle and also mindset of the bank has been kind of less growth less growth focused because of their energy being diverted on asset recovery i think that is uh, changing and almost uh, set to change and some of those these banks will not only deliver good and superior earnings growth but also get re-rated and hence i think you will capture a better return uh, you know or total return would be far better than uh, you know uh, some of the other banks which i mentioned so i think an idea is to you know in my opinion here the pe re-rating and growth will be far more pronounced in this basket so i think one and what we have seen i mean the stocks have done well but still i think long way to go so one should not look at only a short term uh, performance and say the you know it is looking stretch i think there are lo you know lo long long kind of uh, period is ahead of us where you will see earnings growth roe um, profile improving and a uh, lot more uh, uh, returns coming from so i would say remain invested don't worry about short term uh, uh, you know uh, up or down move in the stock prices if it goes down and if you are invested that opportunity to buy because over the next 4 5 years banks are much better place than any other uh, sort of uh, you know set up in in, uh, in 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 bfsi space and also bfsi is a fairly wide basket so you can look at other opportunity but i would say the main invested sector is long way to go just a brief mention on z entertainment it's up 3 and a half percent now two ways to look at it one is the market reading into sl pro pack sale and trying to extrapolate that to a z may be able to do that now we've kind of unequivocally told that and the promoter has said that that's not the case the other bit is macquarie's come out with a note on Z Entertainment, uh, they've taken cues from the Economic Times interview from Subhash Chandra, wherein he mentioned that the, bind, the term sheets could come in as early as April last week, May first week, and maybe, maybe brokerage is taking cognizance of that could be the other reason why Z Entertainment is doing what it is doing, because it's the best performing stock on the index right now, 4% higher. I think three to four interesting uh, uh, parties, parties, yes. Um, and he said there could be PE players as well. Yeah, and not necessarily Indian players, and uh, ranging from India to Japan, he said. So yeah. uh, there is an up, uh, uh, there is a possibility of an outsider coming in too. It's up five percent, Devina, as we speak. I uh, just wanting to make sure to at least our set of viewers that uh, the SL Pro Pack deal has no connection to Z Entertainment and its problems. This could well be Subhash Chandra saying that the deal is happening very very shortly. Um, because any thoughts on uh, this group, the issues that they've faced now the promoter group saying that a deal is imminent at least the buy the term sheets could come in as early as the first week of may even if the deal gets consummated by september 30 the deadline that they've signed with the uh, with the uh, asset management companies So I think you know, Z Group uh, per se is a very good group. We have seen how over the years it has created wealth for shareholders. Of course, you know Z Entertainment is a great company and has done very well. But you know promoters got into infrastructure, used the you know borrowings against G shares, and I think uh, infrastructure. I think most players have been, uh, especially who are in asset ownership space, have uh, sort of suffered and uh, you know losses. So I think and <laughs> promoters are paying price for. Uh, that business call but as having said that i think a good part is that at least they have a good uh, you know family jewel using that they could uh, settle some of the liabilities which which we are kind of seeing in the marketplace so i would assume that i think once the transaction is done you know this this thing should be behind and it's a credible group so uh, uh, and you know subhash chandra has put his personal credibility online saying that he will make sure that every penny is repaid so and it's very important that you know at this point in time it is done because uh, in the entire mutual fund industry is looking for uh, this kind of development. So I do believe that it, it should happen uh, and it's a good asset. It should go through. I mean, question would probably would be, you know, price and control, which I'm sure I have no idea, but promoters would resolve it uh, amicably. All right. Uh, 
because while we've spoken about all the consensus ideas where uh, you know there is a consensus on financials doing well there is a consensus on some consumption names doing well um, is there a contrarian view at all uh, that you have I mean, we've been seeing uh, autos being a contrarian call uh, but that has started to play out over the last one month but is there anything in the works that you see as being a contrarian call which the markets have probably uh, you know shunned as of now but could take the four in some time to come So one sector we are watching very closely, we haven't made our mind yet, but I think could be time to look at is telecom. Uh, you know, uh, industry has consolidated, there are only three players. Uh, Geo has, I think, uh, reached a critical mass. Uh, so, you know, probably some point in time, you know, in, increasing ARPU might play out and being a very high operating leverage game in play, I think, you know, some of the telecom players like Bharti might end up doing well. So we are still evaluating, but uh, that's the one segment one should keep, uh, uh, one uh, you know, sector one should keep a close watch on. Because the moment, uh, you know, it's a three-player market and I think some of the balance sheet is also getting repaired through uh, rights issue. Uh, so once they are behind, uh, you know, uh, you will see, uh, uh, you know, that one sector one should watch out very, very carefully. Still, it is, you know, not very sure whether you know, uh, timing wise, it may, it, it's whether it should be done now or six months later or nine months later. But I think worth watching because it's a large sector and uh, you have a two large cap companies in that name. So one could look at, but watch out. Okay, we will watch out for that. And, you know, it's on that note that because we'll take a moment to thank you for joining in today and giving us your thoughts. But since you mentioned telecom, I would urge you to watch the next conversation that we have because while telecom players are grappling with mounting debt and falling average revenue per user, we talk about the issues with industry veteran Sanjay Kapoor. He joins us on the other side to talk about all that and more. So stay tuned to Bloomberg Quinn Live.